Hey guys, today we're going to use Affinity Designer to create a business card. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing to my channel and also explore other videos. I usually cover Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and other alternatives to Adobe apps. All right, so here I am. I'm going to create a new document. I will use this default size, but be careful. Different countries got different default size for business cards, so please check that with your local printing house. I'm changing some settings here. As you can see, I'm going to add bleeds and margins to my document. For this value, you need to check it with your printing house as well. All right, so my European standard may be different than the standard in US or in Asia. All right, so we got bleeds, we got margins. Here we are, we got just one artboard, I will need one more. So I got front and back of business card in one document. So let's create additional artboard, artboard tool, insert artboard. And this way we got two artboards, like two pages in one document. So we can design front and back in just one document. We can rename those artboards, just double tap on the artboard layer. All right. So let's get started. As you can see, I can I got like one line inside and one line outside the artboard. If you want to make a color like this, never ever do it as I just I I just did. So I use my margin inside. And if I print it out, people will see this white area around. So we need to stretch this color up, up. Not like that, it's still too small. We need to stretch the color until the bleeds, until the line outside the artboard to give this uh, margin for error. If they print this out and if something is misaligned, like one millimeter, the color is stretched outside the printing zone, so you will never ever see like the white thing around your business card. That's why we set up bleeds. So be sure that you set up the like background colors until the bleed, not until the end, but until the bleed, the line outside the document. All right, I'm using some customizations here. So I turn my shape into curves and now I'm using Node Tool Plus Curve Tool to create some custom shape in the same color like in the front of the business card. So we got the same color, but different shape. Let's round this up, maybe this one as well. So we could just this nice little color accent, not too heavy, not too sharp. A round corner too is perfect for something like this. Nice, and now we can move to the front. Back here we got solid color. This will be very simple. I will just draw a little rectangle here to use it as a division line all right i will just type my name and surname and that's it that's all that we will have here in front don't overload your business card with information this will be my name plus there will be a qr code to my youtube channel to my website whatever all right so that's it i use lem lemon milk as a font for this thing it's a free font, you can download this, no problem. Okay, I got my name, I got little rectangle for division, I set up rectangle as the backdrop, so what we need here is a QR code. I'm going to use the QR code generator website to generate my QR code, so I just paste the link here, and now we'll be able to get this PNG of my QR code for free. Unfortunately, SVG or some fancy designs are locked behind the paywall. You need to log in, I think. But you can get the PNG for free or you can copy this straight from the website as well. This will be a small print business card, so PNG will do in my case. 1000 pixels. All right, I just copy and I simply need to go back to Affinity Designer and hit Command V for paste. I got my QR code here. It's PNG, so I cannot recolor this easily, but I can modify blending mode. 
So if I play with blending mode a little bit from normal to let's say maybe multiply something here at the very top, make it darker, we can simply keep dark colors, so the black in the QR code and skip white color. So I can see the backdrop below because I did not erase it. Keep in mind, it's still there. I just change a blending mode for this image to darken. All right, let's make this composition here on the front. Maybe if I move this to be black as well, we got this nice contrast with the green and reposition everything. I want to keep this front really clean and simple. All right. Let's copy this shape over here. It's same color right now, so you cannot see it. But if I add gradient to it, we will have this nice, very gentle shape here. Keep in mind, you need to test print any document with gradient like this. It may look really good on the computer screen, but after they actually print it out, the gradient may be too strong or too weak. So if you go with gradients, mixing with solid colors like this, I recommend test printing. All right, I will copy some elements to the back of my business card, like my name. I flip the shape to the right side already. Now we need to be more careful about the font size. This is the back of the card. We need to cram more information here. So we need to control the font and font size as well. So let's just try to type some additional information like tagline, like the job, occupation. We can use different font for that. It's not good to keep everything in the capital letters. So let's go with light font this time, like Roboto light, like very standard, very common font will do. Again, let's type the size from hand here. We can use color from the document using color picker to make it green, maybe a little bit lighter, not black. Cool. So that's the most important. And now we can go with additional information. I try to copy and check that I should put the QR code on both sides, but I think that would be not necessary. So I can just get rid of that. Hit delete on my keyboard. Gone. All right, so we need like phone number, maybe location, email, website, the standard set of information you want to share with others on your business card. So just this fake phone number, <laughs> just for information, that's not my phone number. Don't try to call it. All right, some fake email. And what else? Maybe I should put location, Bangkok. And website, maybe, as you can see, I just use a move tool, a cursor tool, and then hold command to make a duplicate of existing text line. Now we can use alignment panel to make a spacing equal. So equal space between those four lines done. Let's place it here and move to the right a little bit, we will make a space for icons. So I will draw a custom icon for each line of text here. You can borrow, download some icons. There are so many free icons all around, but in this tutorial, I'm going to draw a custom icons. We are in Affinity Designer. This is the vector design program, so it's really easy to make your own icons if you know how. All right. So I need icon for each element. I will start with rectangle tool for male. Change fill color to stroke color. Let's set up the stroke to be one point like this. Nice. Now I just need uh, some kind of accent inside. I will need a little bit more space. Let's move this to the right even more like this. And for this first icon, I will use a pen tool to add some details. So this is pen tool. I'm holding shift to make the line 45 degrees. Nice. Now move tool to rescale this element. I don't want it to touch the border. I want to have a little gap to make it lighter. Cool. Looks good. Let's double check with the color. I need this color 
for this element as well. All right, so we stick with the one shade of green. I got one icon, two more to go. Let's go with the location, that's an easy one. We can start with oval to draw a circle. We can expand this shape and then just drag one node down, change this node to be sharp, pointing down like this. This is a very common shape for location. All right, and we got two more. We got website and phone number to illustrate. For phone number, nowadays most people just draw a mobile device like mobile phone. So let's try to do something like this. Hmm, not really obvious that this is phone number. I will change that. Maybe just a little start button at the, over here, something like this, a little bit better. All right, and we got website. For the website, I got two ideas. We can play about www or we can maybe draw some kind of globe, show that this is like the global network, the internet. So maybe I will go with that, but before that I need to add accent to the location because every other icon got some accent inside and this one is without accent, so look a little bit strange. Not as one said, so let's add a circle inside. Now I'm going to zoom in, command plus, and using no tool I will open this circle a little bit, make a gap so it's even lighter. Break here, break here, and now I can delete the unnecessary line. Nice. So this is our location icon. So we need icon for the website now. Maybe we'll go with the oval again. Hold shift to draw a perfect circle. Then we can duplicate this. Command C, Command V. And one more time, duplication, command C, command V, then I rotate that and we got some kind of network icon. All right, not bad. So we were able to design four icons, custom icons for a business card. I mean, as I mentioned, you can speed this up, you can just download so ready to use icons or you can buy them if you aim for like premium stuff. All right, uh, I think I will play around this phone thing, the number, phone number. It's not that obvious, this is like mobile device. Let's change this and make like maybe nine little lines to indicate nine numbers on the like, key keyboard while you're picking the number using your phone. Right, this is one line and simply duplicate that. Okay, I think it's look a little bit better as a phone number icon. Cool. Let's zoom out and see it from a distance. Okay, I'm happy with my icons. I got all of my information, icons, some additional colors, colors and decoration elements on front and back. Maybe I will duplicate this and try to make a lighter version of this element. I got some free space so I can play with some decoration here. This would be lighter. Let's move it down in the layer panel. And now I can use node tool to customize the curve. Keep in mind, it's need to popping out outside the document. It must be at least big as bleeds, all right? You cannot make smaller elements than bleeds. Otherwise, you're risking that after they print it out, you will have a wide stroke around your design. Bleeds will be cut out during the printing. So after they finish printing, they will take your design and they will cut out the bleeds. So you cannot see them, but it's very helpful because if the machine for cutting your business card is misaligned a little bit you will not see a blank paper white color you will see what is printed on the blitz 
So we will have full back backdrop all around and you will make the printing guy life much easier. <laughs> so always use your blades. Even you cannot see what is outside the artboard, it need to be there for printing purpose. All right, I'm happy with my little business card. Now we are ready to export this. So let's go to file, export and export our document as PDF. Most printing houses like, like to receive PDFs. I need whole document so I can have front and back in one document. Sometimes they require two separate documents, but in my case, I got this nice PDF. As you can see here, page one and page two. So we got PDF with two pages. One page is front, one page is back. All in PDF, all in scalable vectors. Ready to send to the printing house together with bleeds. All right, guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I know it's a little bit longer one. So thank you for bearing with me to the end. As I mentioned, you can explore more videos on my YouTube channel. I cover Affinity Design, Affinity Photo and also Affinity Publisher. And see you in the next tutorial. Bye.